Well, good morning, everyone. Hello. And welcome to Peace Step Church. It's good to see you all here this morning. Well, again, welcome everyone. And I'm jumping ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me back up and say again, welcome to everyone. And wondering if there's any announcements out here. We've got a few. I just want to let you know about November 12th, the men's breakfast. It's in White Bear Lake. And so come. Everyone is welcome. And it starts at 9 o'clock. So I just want to welcome everyone to the men's breakfast. It's at Perkins, the Perkins restaurant there. Thank you very much for that and sharing that announcement this morning. And I think um, we got another one. Lynn's going to make an announcement this morning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Tuesday the 7th is the last day to sign up for the Women's Retreat, which is November the 12th. So please register if you can. We, need, we really need to find out how many are coming. You can, and those of you that are watching online, you're also very welcome to come. That's November the 12th, 8 to 5. And the speaker is Linda Thyssen. And her topic is God Who. So thank you very much. And again, please register as soon as possible. That's quite an interesting topic, God Who. I'm curious to find out what that's all about, and I'm sure you are too. So sign up and come and find out. We're all going to learn about God's Word that day. Any other announcements that need to be made? I'm going to talk about game night. This month of November, we're not going to have game night, but December we will. And I will announce, announce more about that later, the details later. But we will have one in December. And I think that's all the announcements. Okay. Let's worship our Lord this morning in song. We're here to worship him and praise our Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. Praise him. Amen. I was just informed that we did have a correction. The deadline to re register is tomorrow for the woman's retreat because tomorrow is the 7th. So this is for the November 12th woman's retreat. So the deadline is tomorrow. So please register by tomorrow. And now for prayer requests. You can write your prayer requests unspoken on the piece of paper we provided and we'll collect them in our box here. And it's between you and God. Okay. So whatever you can give, just give from your heart. You can give online or you can pay, you can give in cash or check here as we collect it here soon. And these are ways to give. Thank you very much. Now let's pray. We're going to pray for a brother that's got some problems, pain with his back or kidney. And anything else that we need to pray for auditorily or without pr uh, privately. So Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for this cold day. But it's a beautiful day. You have made it. We pray for RJ with his back. Sorry, his his back, not his kidneys. We pray, God, that you give him strength. Help him to rest. We pray for the pain that it would go away. And others that have issues with pain and those that have put prayer requests in this box here, we pray, God, that you would hear their prayer and answer their prayer. We lift them up before you, Lord, because these are your children, your people. We pray that you would give them wisdom and where they need wisdom, healing where they need healing. We also pray for Jeff's message this morning, and we pray, God, that you would anoint him, give him the words to speak this morning from your word, because this is your word, Lord. We pray for this week as well, that we continue in fellowship with you, and how time is so quickly going. And you could come anytime, Lord, we know that. 
We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, Pastor. <laughs> enjoy that song. How many of you did? Yeah. And this actually, that song will really connects with my, to my topic this morning, and you'll see that later. Well, good morning, everyone. Shannon said today, this, this morning, she said, wow, time has certainly gone fast. Here we are in November already. I can't believe it. So we've got holidays coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Wow, it's unbelievable. So time does keep marching on. But with God, there's no sense of time. He's the one that controls everything. And with time, we are time limited here, but not God. So we look forward to seeing when there, a time when we will not have to worry about time. Well, we know Thanksgiving is coming up in a couple weeks. So this is a good time to start my topic today. I'm going to do three straight weeks of talking about the topic of thanks or thanksgiving. So next week, this week, next week, and then the following week. So I'll, I'll have them, I will have different books of the Bible that I will be preaching from. So get ready for learning about thanks. 
it's a good reminder for all of us. Why should we always say thank you? Why? If God didn't create create you or give us creation, nothing, there'd be nobody here to thank God or praise God. I notice a lot of you today are just kind of like wearing Viking shirts. I'm kind of wondering what's going on. Are we thanking God for them? I don't know. I'm not sure why we're all wearing thank thanking God for the Vikings, but anyway, my point is thanking God for all, for the bad and the good. And God bless you all, even though you are Viking fans, God bless you all. So, I want you to start thinking about my message this morning. So, I've got, of course, some pictures that relate with my message. Here's my first one. So what do you see in this picture? Somebody singing, celebrating, glory, hallelujah, excitement, praising God, loving God, thanking God, yeah. And many of you do that, and many of you had some very good answers. Now, in one word, what would you say in this picture is? Singing hallelujah. Singing hallelujah. Someone said offline or online. Being in a hallelujah choir, love. Being in one spirit, joy. Someone online is saying in practice for a heavenly choir. Good one. That was a good one. Now, in one word, again, one word for describing this picture, what would you say? Joy, fellowship, that's a good one. Excitement. Different people collaborating together and making a joyful sound. Well, here's my second picture. What do you see in this picture? Proclaiming the gospel, waking up someone. The man probably jumped out of his shoes because of the loudness. Making announcement. Anything else? Hurting your ears. <laughs> you have to be very careful. Like very loud, something very loud. They are like screaming out Vikings, right? <laughs> I see that shirt on you. So I'm trying to get someone's attention. The hearing aids are blowing out your hear your hearing aids. The speaker, a loud speaker. People listening to a loud noise. Wake up call, maybe? For you, yeah, right? <laughs> for wake up for you. A loud noise, a scream or shout. <coughs> These are all good ones, very good answers. And one word describing this picture, what would you say? Shout, shout out, shout, shout. A voice, worshiping, a worship. That's a good one. Scream. Now here's my third picture. We had one word for the first and one for the second. Now here's my third. Someone saying worshiping, prayer, praying to Jesus, dialoguing with Jesus, crying out to God. Praising God. (laughs) 
You can see it very clearly, praising God. You can see the, the light gives you light. It's not dark. Anything more? Jesus is the light. The cross and the hands. Yeah, isn't that cool? Getting our focus on Jesus, or God. In one word, how would you describe this? God's voice? In one word. That's two words. Praise. Someone says praise. Who is God? Come Saturday, find out about that. <laughs> worship. Give worship to him. Worship God. Now with the three pictures I showed you, remember I told you my message re is related to thanks, thanksgiving. This morning, can anyone guess what my topic would be? Or what those three, say, thanking God, thanking God would be the main message, giving thanks, praising God. Thank Thanksgiving, Jesus. So why are they using their voice like that? That foghorn. How? Why did they use that? Everything is cl yes. It's very much about worshiping God. That's right. Just worship. And this is part of thanksgiving. It's worship. And in Psalms, in the Psalms 100, there are only five verses in this psalm. So I'm going to have you read this psalm. There will be two slides, and then I will sign it after we're done reading. Okay, let's go back to the verse. It's Psalms 100. You saw that it has five verses. Hold on, we're having some technical issues here. Okay, here we go. And this is a grateful song of praise from the heart. Shout a joyful jo joy. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. <laughs> Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. <laughs> Worship the Lord with gladness. Again, come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. Amen. We start, this is how we start our topic of thanksgiving by praising our Lord. 
this that psalm was created to ex to say that we need to make a joyful lo noise before the Lord. Just like you saw that foghorn making that big loud noise, that's what we are to do: make a joyful noise before the Lord. Shout unto joy with, like in your car. If you've got music, you're you can crank up the music or Christian music. You know how you've seen people go down the street with their loud radios on? Well, you can turn on your Christian music and praise the Lord while you're doing it, while you're listening to it. There are different ways of worship. Like with our hands, we praise to God with our hands. And I saw you during the worship songs lifting your hands in joy to the Lord. When I read this Psalms, I realized, oh, we're doing the same thing as you're doing in the congregation today. Another way of praising God is jumping up and down in excitement. Yeah, someone here, they're raising their hands in joy. You can sing praise, jump up and down. What else? What other way? Praising him with what? Dance and dance. People, that's a good one. Dancing. Yeah. Dan like dancing in the rain. That's beautiful. Like Psalm says, dance before the Lord, like David did. But how about you? How do you sh worship God? Show me. I mean, you yourselves. I see many of you when you're at the, with your Viking shirt on. How do you how do you fans support the Vikings and they're clapping their hands out here? Well, that's the same way you worship God. Clap your hands before the Lord. And shout unto the Lord. I love the Dolphins, and yeah, I I I shout for them. I'm a, a real support of the f Dolphins, but I also love my God. God made all of you, all the Vikings and the Dolphins. And that's why we are here on this earth. Because God wants us to worship and praise him and be thankful. And that's how we communicate with him. We show him gratitude and thanksgiving because he made us. He loved us first and made us. So we need to be grateful for that. And of course we have different ways of praising our Lord. And your sound doesn't have to be perfect in harmony and glorious songs. It doesn't have to. God doesn't care. He just wants you to praise him. Us being deaf, of course, we don't know if our, our voices, our tones are kind of off. And maybe people hearing people to hear us and they kind of look over at us like, oh my goodness. But you know what? God doesn't care. He loves us. He wants us to worship him from our hearts. And you're singing unto the Lord, not unto man. You're singing to him. And God knows. And again, I want to emphasize, it's a heart issue. He comes from the heart. In gratitude toward God for his love for you. And we're all deaf. But you know what? We're his precious children. And we can praise our Heavenly Father in various ways. He just wants us to worship Him. However you choose to do it, while you're working, while you're at home, while you're in your car, while you're cleaning. Even at the games you go to, you can praise God. Outside you can praise Him in the rain, like you were saying earlier, dancing in the rain. But we need to be grateful. That's the point grateful to God. The Bible doesn't say we need to sing a perfect joyful song unto the Lord. No. If someone has found that, let me know. I have not found where it says you have to have a perfect sound and joyful noise unto the Lord. Because we're not perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. But we're grateful for what he's done. He died for our sins. 
and that's what we're eternally grateful for. He was perfect. We still struggle, and we still make mistakes. We still sin. Even like when people come up here and do make the announcements, they're, I'm, just, I'm just so grateful that they're doing it. And people online can actually see different people coming up here to make announcements to prayer for prayer for the offering because we're part of the body of Christ. We're making together a joyful noise unto the Lord. Maybe some of you really enjoy to sing, singing, but some of you maybe not. Some may just sit there and in your mind, think and meditate before God. Read the Psalms or read the scriptures and it just blesses your heart. Just praise him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Even when you got problems, even when you feel down, praise him. While you're working, praise him. And even if things are tight, maybe financially, God will bless you. Just praise him. And we as together, his body, the body of Christ, we are in tune together, praising and worshiping our Lord. He knows our hearts. And we can make a joyful noise. And we as deaf people can feel the, the vibrations. I got the floor, the chairs. We like that. We like to make noise for the Lord. That's part of our worship. Right? So make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lift up your hands. That's making a joyful noise visually. That works. Now I highlighted some parts of this verse in yellow that I want to elaborate on. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. When I was a little boy growing up, my favorite song was Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me. Everyone knows that one. It was such an easy song to memorize. Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Yes, Jesus Loves Me. The Bible tells me so. That's a way of praising God. So how about you? Do you have a favorite song that you like to sing? Use it. Sing it. And then again, it says with gladness, you come before him and praise him, make a joyful song. When we shout for joy, that's shouting for thanksgiving. That's a grateful praise before the Lord. And we're so grateful what, for what he's done for us. That's why we praise. <laughs> and that's what it means to shout joyfully before the Lord. It's thanksgiving, a grateful praise. That's thanksgiving. So how much has God done for you? Well, we have to realize he loved us so much. He cherishes us. Those that are watching online, those that are here, God loves you, cherishes you. So in grateful praise, we in turn thank him and praise him. And sometimes you don't, maybe some people don't like to physically raise their hands, but in their mind and in their heart, they're grateful to God and, and communing with him. And I know, you know God is there. You know when you pray, he's there. When you sing and praise him, he's there. Like Shannon was explaining about when she was praying, 
She said, Amen. That Amen means an agreement. It takes two to agree. Amen and Amen. And in the Bible, you know, the Pharisees, they did try to silence Jesus. They didn't want him to speak. And why? Why do you suppose that's true? They wanted all the attention on themselves. They didn't want anyone to be giving Jesus the attention. Just like when he rode into Jerusalem on the donkey. We call that Palm Sunday. And they were all praising and shouting praises unto him. And the Pharisees saw that. The people were praising Jesus as he rode into the don rode into Jerusalem with a donkey. And they were all waving palm branches and singing praises for Jesus. That's what this is all about. Shout unto the Lord a joyful song. And of course the Pharisees are real upset with that. They were jealous. Can you imagine that? In 1987, the twins won the World Series. And they remember they had the parade? I'll never forget. It was so cold. I went to that parade. It was so cold. And you could see the confetti. They dropped the confetti down. And people were waving. And the cars, each car had one of the players in there. And people were shouting. Now imagine if you were in the car, or if Jesus was in the car, and you were part of the crowd out there. Wouldn't that be awesome? You would be out there with joy because you know the truth. And we know the truth from the Bible. We know what Jesus did, and that's why we would shout a joyful noise to him. In the book of Luke, chapter 8, Verse 4, Jesus said, I tell you that if these people in the crowds were quiet, that even the stones themselves will cry out or shout out to joy. Out, they would shout out for joy. So if the stones cried out, and made noise, would that be something that would be very odd? But that's if the people were quiet and not making a sound. Maybe you kind of wonder what quiet actually means. Like a long time ago, on, on TV they see you can hear a pin drop. And that would make noise. That means how quiet it is. You can hear a pin drop. Now just imagine those stones. Quiet. Never made a sound. All of a sudden they're crying out. But we are to make a we are to cry out a joyful noise. And if we didn't, the stones would. That's what Jesus said. So we need to make a loud sound unto the Lord. Make it very clear we're worshiping and honoring and grateful to him for what he's done. So if you're quiet, you'll be able to hear the stone or the pin drop or the stone make noise. I'm sure you'd feel it as deaf people. So just imagine what that noise would sound like if a stone was crying out. So Jesus was sort of paralleling that with the stones crying out compared to the people crying out. Of course, we're going to have a more joyful noise because we have a lot to be grateful for. We'd scream out like someone says, yell, we'd yell out in gratitude. And remember, we don't just do this on Sundays. We do this every day. While I'm driving, sometimes 
you know, you'll be listening to the Christian music and some people may not like it, but you're praising God. And some people maybe can hear it. And that would be a way of showing that you're grateful to God. And you don't need to be embarrassed. Stand up for God. They're doing it for the devil, making devil music, so I don't make Christian music out there. There's another, has a license plate, plate that they put on. It says, don't follow me, follow Jesus. They put that in the back of their car. Maybe some people look at that and think, yeah, right, that's kind of annoying. But you know what? That'll make them think. It says, follow Jesus, don't follow me. There, you got the thumb going up towards Jesus, following Jesus. And then also an A, see what's that letter A? We are, is, the Bible says, that means when you, It doesn't mean we ourselves or we focus on ourselves. It doesn't mean that. This is what this means. We are his people. We focus on him because we are his people. And it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about ourselves. We are his people because he made us. He made us. So that means we are his people. Amen. Maybe some people are surprised that you can sing. I'm sure some of you can really sing very well. So we sing... We bless God. We praise God. It's him. Again, even though you have a beautiful voice, don't let the praise go to you. Give all praise to God. Maybe while you're s walking and you're singing or dancing and people look at you and they're thinking, what are you doing? Tell them you're praising God. You're excited for what God did. Sure, people may look and wonder, but that'd be a way of telling them about the Lord. Suppose one, like our, one of our sisters here was working, and while she's working, she's praising God. I'm sure she'd get people's attention. And she could just say, I'm praising God. Is there anything wrong with that? No. In the morning, before church, while I'm driving here, I'm singing praises to my God. That's what one of our sisters is saying here in the audience. We look forward to coming to church, gathering together to worship the Lord. We are his people, gathered together to worship him. <coughs> and God doesn't care how you sound. He doesn't care if you're singing your favorite song, whatever inspires you. Just worship him, that's all. And that's what we're here for, to worship him. We're here to praise him, to listen to his word. And to worship him. That's what I'm saying in one word, worship. And let's remember, God only is concerned what's in your heart. That's how we that's the reason why we worship him. We worship him from the heart. So we praise him, we're grateful to him from our heart for what he's done for us. <coughs> Has there anyone here ever felt like you're saying, Thanks, thanks a lot, Lord? Or everybody saying from the heart, Thank you, Lord. There's a difference. There's a difference with thank, being thankful from the heart and just being thankful from the head. <laughs> and I want to emphasize the worship, that worship is not performance.
you must perform and look good in front of the audience or in front of people. That's not what worship's all about. Again, God is more concerned about what's going on in us, in our hearts. And hearts that are grateful for all he's done for us. So go ahead and shout and be grateful to God and thanksgiving to God in praise from your heart. And there's another verse. This will be my final verse this morning. And this is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 10. It says, you will have all that you want to eat. Then you will praise the Lord your God for the good land that he has given to you. See that word? It says, eat. We're, he will bless us and praise us. He'll give us all we need. And we praise him and thank him for all he's done. And notice that there's two P's here. That's pray. Pray and worship. Praise. And someone said P for peace, too. That's, that's a good one. It gives you peace in your heart. And remember, whatever happens in our lives, good or bad, we still need to thank God. And I will continue this message of Thanksgiving for the next couple weeks. Again, because this is Thanksgiving month, and this is what we need to be thankful for, everything that God's done. We glorify him through our Thanksgiving and praise. We thank him with all of our hearts. And God, again, is concerned more about the heart attitude. So make a joyful, lo loud noise unto the Lord. And we thank our Lord and Savior for all he's done. Amen. And now for my trivia questions and then my pictures. But before we're done, we'll have the Lord's Supper here as well. So my first question is, is this true or false? That we need only the intercession of one between us and God. How many say that this is true? Raise your hand. We have three people. How many say it's false? Several hands are raised. How many don't know? Several hands are raised. Oh, good. Well, here we go. Here's the answer. It is true. And of course, yes, it's true. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. It says, It is God who made, uh, made you part of Christ Jesus, and Christ has become for us wisdom from God. He's the reason that we are right with God and pure enough to be in his presence. Christ is the one who sets us free from sin. And do you know how he did that? God looked on him, or looked on the world, and saw the sin of man. And that's why he sent his son to the earth to preach. 
and he died innocent as the innocent lamb on the cross for our sins so we could be forgiven. And because of that, we can have fellowship with God and be in right relationship with God. And that's what we need to be grateful for. He was a propitiation for our sin. Here's my second question. So is this true or false that Jesus entered into John's ship when he preached to the multitude at the Sea of Tiberias? How many say that this is true? Several, the one. How many say they don't know? Okay, be careful about this now. And the answer is... One person said it was false. <coughs> and the answer is false. And this is from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. It says, As Jesus stood beside the lake called Galilee, a crowd of people pushed to get closer to him and to hear the teachings of God. Jesus saw two boats at the shore of the lake. And the fishermen were washing their nets. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon. So it wasn't John. Jesus, he asked Simon to push off a little from the shore. And then he sat down in the boat and taught the people on the shore. So the answer was false. And that was the Sea of, or the Lake of Galilee. And it was Simon's boat. Now my thir third question. So this is my final question and third question. So is this true or false? That one of Christ's words spoken on the cross is recorded in the mother tongue of Jesus' Jesus' eternal life. How many say that this is true? A few hands. How many say it's false? Not many. Many don't know. Many don't know. Well, again, we're learning something new. Here's the answer. And yes, this is true. And this is from the book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 34. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out loudly, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama, sabachthani. And that means, my God, my God, why have you left me alone? He said those words on the cross in his native tongue, Hebrew tongue. Interesting. Now, are you ready to smi smile this morning? Here's my funny pictures. We all love to sing, right? But we're not real knowledgeable about reading notes. A lot of us don't. I don't know how to read EFG. I have no idea how to read notes. But the girl is saying, why are they called quarter notes, Billy? They wrote this song in notes, quarter notes. These are the music notes they're talking about. This is how we sing our songs off of these songs. But mm -hmm. 
and often it happens I go to buy like the food store, grocery store. Friday, Friday went to grocery store with my wife. And, you know, of course, Halloween's just been over, so the candy's all gone. But I saw Christmas trees and all the decorations for Christmas. I thought, where's Thanksgiving? It's like that's a holiday that got overlooked. And this message is so perfect. We go from Halloween right to Christmas. How's that, huh? And overlook Thanksgiving. But it says, how about instead of rushing from Halloween to Christmas, that we use the month of November as a month of Thanksgiving to properly prepare our hearts to celebrate Christmas. To celebrate Christmas for what it really is about. The birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why I've decided for the next few weeks we're going to talk about thanksgiving, gratitude to our God for what he's done. That's what's coming up. That's what the holidays are all about. That's what thanksgiving's about. Looks like people tend to forget about being thankful and grateful. And you're right. I like it that November is a good month to be thankful and grateful. So this is going to be a reminder to us all. And here's my third picture. <coughs> and this is ta and the ads taken November like an acronym N O V E M B E R and adding statements about it like first of all and never stop praying and thanking God and that's in First Thessalonians 5 17 through 4, 18 then the O only Jesus I'm thankful to have as best friend and that's from John fifteen fifteen. and then V very kind and compassion God to have. And that's from the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verse 7, and also Matthew 9, 36. And then the E, everlasting love. I thank God for love. And that's from the book of Psalms, 106, Verse 1. And M for merciful God and have lament. That's from the book of Law. Uh, the, uh, merciful God to have mercy. It's from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 to 23. B is to be thankful, fully thankful <coughs> for what we have. We have clothes, we have a house, we have cars, we have jobs. And R is for remember to say thanks to God <coughs> daily. <coughs> Just like we did today. And this is from the book of Psalms 100, verse 4 through 5. The psalm I used today. So be thankful to God as we leave today. And now it's time for the Lord's Supper. I'm going to ask Diane to come forward to help with the elements.
everyone have a, the elements now? All of you here today have given your heart to the Lord. We come together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Become a part of his body, and all are welcome to the Lord's table. For all things are ready. The Lord be with you all. And so let's lift up our hearts to the Lord. And let us th be thankful to the Lord. The Lord our God. <coughs> the night that Jesus was betrayed, they were all together at the Last Supper. And Jesus was troubled in his heart. And he took the bread, he broke it, and gave thanks to God. And he said, take this and eat it. For this represents my body, which is given up for you all. So do this in remembrance of me. And also, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. And he said, take all of you and drink. And as often as you drink and eat, you do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new and everlasting covenant with God and man. So as often as you drink and as often as you eat, you redo this remembrance of me. And it means we have communion with Christ. So let's partake of the bread together. And the cup of blessing. So this is the body and blood of Christ. Now we'll collect the, the cups and put them in the basket. It's coming around.
Amen. And now for the blessing. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you. May he go with you to be a friend to you, above you, to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful again for your word. We're so grateful for your word. And we need to be reminded to be given thanks to you. You are the only one, the one and only. You sent your only son here to become human and the only one that could forgive our sins and to give us eternal life. We're so grateful for that. And your message today, very simple as it was, is to be reminded that we need to be grateful and we need to continually praise you and glorify you and honor you for who you are and for what you've done. You made us, Lord. You made this whole earth that we live in, this beautiful earth. You've made many things. You've made all things, and we're so grateful for that. We could never have done it. Only you could do that, Lord. So thank you for the reminder. that if we forget to say thankful, you have permission to lap us around the side of the head and make sure that we do that. That we say thank you for all you've done and to praise you, to show you we love you. We ask that you take care of all of your people, give them good health, watch over them, comfort those that need comfort, We've come here to love and to worship you, Lord. And that's why we're here. We're your children. You love us and we love you. And you know the needs of your people, Lord. And we ask that you would answer those needs for each of your children, those that are watching online as well. Bless their hearts. And we know that you are the reason we come together to worship. It's not for me. I'm just your servant, your humble servant. I give them the message from you. But we're here to worship and praise you, Lord, until we come again next week and learn more about Thanksgiving. Keep us all safe until we can come together again, Lord. And keep us warm as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.